before this podcast started, Joe Rogan said 41 episodes for the next 41 years of our lives. I say forget that. I say forget that. Let's go out there and we'll record the episode 41 for the joy of episode 41. And we're going to leave it all out in the podcast world. BZ, we have the rest of our lives to be mediocre. And trust me, we're mediocre. But we have the opportunity to joke like gods for the next two hours on the greatest podcast the world has ever known. But we can't be afraid to suck. There's no room for fear in this game. If we go out there and we half-ass it because we're scared, because we're Todd Toms, because we're Karens, and all we're left with is an excuse. We're always going to wonder if we could have made it. We're always going to wonder if we could have been huge. If we could go out there and we could give it absolutely everything. One time. Just one time. That's heroic. Let's be heroes. Let's kill it in episode 41. Let's kick it. Well, welcome to another Waco Ruby Ridge colored afternoon here in the rugged Texas panhandle. We are broadcasting from a nondescript building in a nondescript yard in a nondescript neighborhood, bringing you the very latest and greatest of all the banned and censored content that can no longer be found due to the government infringing upon our rights. We are the sovereign citizens and our voices will no longer be silenced. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you go a little crazy there, man. This is fraternized with these guys, and we're not crazy. Well, I okay, mean, look, we're not that crazy. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> we're close. We're close. We're well, just not like oh, I mean, <laughs> we're not all the way there. Yeah, I mean, there's some crazy things that are that are set. Well, I mean, we we done some crazinesses up in here. I mean, pretty much last week, we we castrated somebody. Yeah, yeah. And killed them. Chemically castrated and then killed them. Yeah, and then killed their pet. Yeah. Through no fault of their... It's like we were like a cracked out Bob Barker last week, Bro, man. I'm telling you, it was the heat. <laughs> it had to have been the heat. had to have been the heat. It had to have been the heat and the fact that it was our uh, 40th episode. Yeah, maybe so. 40. No holes barred. No holes barred. It, you know, 40, it, it, it's a midlife crisis. I think that's what it was. I'm surprised the podcast didn't go out and buy a Corvette. We were just, we were purging shit. Okay, well, <laughs> I felt a little down and out, you know? You know, I a feel like off. I, I, of all people, came up with some pretty good questions, I felt. Yeah, as you always like do. But, serious but questions. last week was like solid questions. Yeah, just all around. Beer was good. Had a special beer? Yeah, no. I mean, it was another an, another turn of events with a Thinky Blinder uh, Libations Edition. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on record. I vote we do more of that. Well, it was it was pretty eye-opening. And sadly, we felt that the episode was lacking a little bit. And it kind of was... It kind of brought it all together at the end of the night when we mm-hmm. looked over and we realized that we didn't even finish... The beer. Yeah. We had this wonderful beer that cost <laughs> way too much money, and we got to talking and BSing and blah, 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 and we realized we didn't even finish it. Yeah, I know. Sad. We got we got done with the entire thing, and I went to go grab another uh, nightcap. Oh, nightcap. That's how you're going to put it. <laughs> and, and old Pinewood over night, here, he goes... Nightcap, a.k.a. an entire bottle of scotch. Fair enough. <laughs> so, the old Pinewood... Pulls up the uh, remainder of the bigger, better Batistas. Yep. Or Baptist, Baptistas, whatever it was. It's my fault. And I was like, bro, I'm sorry, you bro. still had some of that? You's holding out on me? You stingy bitch! <laughs> well, we did drink it. It was 130 degrees when we got to it, but we did drink it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. There was a couple extra notes from that uh, mojito or whatever that was the barrel that it was uh, staged in. Mascal or mescal. Mescal. Yeah. By the way, I didn't do our thing. I'm your humble host, Pastor Pinewood, and across from this booze-drenched table, as always, is the cuttable, lovable... Cuttable? Cuttable. Cuttable. What did I say? Oh, dude. 
Okay, so you know how I always read my notes, and sometimes yeah. if I get off my notes, I'm, I'm like a, a lost animal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just this time, I actually typed. Cuttable? Cuttable. <laughs> C-U-D-D-A-B-L-E instead of cuttable. Noise. Cut, no, cut, cuttleable? Cut, cuttable. Cut, 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 I'm going to stick with cuttable. Cut, I like it. Cuttable. Everyone, All right, whatever. Okay, so anyway, your name is? Beasy. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't prompt us to say our names. Tis all right. I forgive you. But it's going to be better. 41 is going to be better. It's going to be a good episode. However, we're starting off. Okay, so we got two We got two things. We got one thing that's wonderful, mm-hmm. but also one thing that's confusing. The thing that's wonderful is it's cooler this week. Yes. Fall is not here, but it's some, cool. summer is on its last grasp. It has... It has flirted. Flirted with some cool weather? Flirted with a little bit of cool weather. And, you know, it just kind of gives you a little kiss on the neck just to just... <laughs> I'm here. I'm coming for you later. Nice. Nice. Now, we are in the doghouse again today. We are. Back down here in the old, uh, oh, what would you call it? Central South Texas Panhandle? I guess we can call it the hub. So, yeah, we can call it the hub. That's acceptable. Because I know it's... Called the Hub City. Yeah, Southern Plains. There you go. But up in my neck of the woods, I've had a couple of mornings in that 63, 64 range. Mm, and you boy, lucky dog. That's noise. <laughs> I bet you it's so. It's noise getting out there. I, I don't mind working in the garden when it's 62, 63, 64 degrees. That's pretty, pretty sweet. I don't mind walking around naked when well, it's 62, 63. Yeah, but I mean, you don't mind walking around naked anytime. I mean, I guess that's fair. I mean, with very few exceptions. <laughs> I guess I guess when it's even hotter outside, I prefer to be naked. Right. But I've seen you shirtless in a deer stand, sir. So I mean, well, it's not exactly dependent upon the weather. I think it's just one of those things. It's just it's just one of them one of them busy centric cities. Right. So being cooler is better, right? And if Sorry, I got I got confused with the, the music. I thought for a brief second I played the wrong Rocky Jackson song. <laughs> I was like, that's not the doghouse, but it is. It is it the doghouse. I just I was confused in yeah, there for a moment. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so it is cooler, it but is. I am confused about one thing. Okay. Why do all of the fall seasons have to run together? Uh, man, and I already know where you're going with this Look, nonsense. It's it's already it's pumpkin everything. Yeah, pumpkins are everywhere. Pumpkin spice. You got pumpkins on the street corner. United selling pumpkins already. It's it, ridiculous. It's not even October pumpkins yet. Pumpkins aren't even in season at this point. They're barely ready to go. Okay, so that's first and foremost. And then on top of that, you got Halloween coming up. So everybody's got all their Halloween spirit. Halloweens have taken over every vacant building in the entire city. Well, that's what they do. I know. You know, they're in Afghanistan right now in the, the U.S. Embassy because it's a vacant building. I was waiting to see if football season was going to get uh, shut down for the COVIDs again this year. And then they were going to have all the football stadiums are now spirit arenas. Ah, nice. <laughs> I like that. You could go there and saunter out onto the field, and they just have racks and racks and racks. Which of, is even uh, funnier because the Texas Tech is the United Spirit Arena. Oh, wow. They could get a little double dippage going. Double dippage. It's a shame for them that Halloween's during football season because they could make some of that sweet uh, get Halloween some of that, scratch. Get the Halloween <laughs> scratch. <laughs> So you got Halloween, you got pumpkin everything, you got fall colors, and you still have Thanksgiving coming up. Yeah. And you know, you know what ruins the entirety of those amazing two, three months? White girls? Christmas. Oh, Christmas. White girls are close second. <laughs> Don't get me wrong on that. They're they're blowing the shit out of that. <laughs> pumpkin spice nonsense. Yes. Which yes. is ridiculous. With their Uggs. Ugh, and Uggs. They're, they're, yep. That's why they make you say, ugh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I agree. And they're not even comfortable. Are they not? No. I Dude, can't say that I've ever worn a pair I'm, of Uggs. I, I had to do it just to be like, why, why are these here? Wow, you're devoted to your uh, and, life experience. Bro, I, I put them on and instantly my feet went to 9,000 degrees and yep. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> you said, <laughs> ugh. <laughs> well, in all seriousness... Uh, I, I'm going to cut you off real quick. Um, sponsors? Possibly, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> ugh. 
that would be a dramatic twist of fate if the what they twist <laughs> if if next episode episode forty two yes. we were like and Watson. also this segment's coming in from our sponsor Uggs. <laughs> Whether you're a dude that's cold in the north or you're just a basic white bitch, Uggs. <laughs> oh, oh man, I love that's it. funny. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay, so you got me off my tangent, and you even made me cuss in the first five minutes of the episode. Bro. I'm sorry about that. All right, so I went into Hobby Lobby to buy some pens for my wife. Well, that's your first mistake. I sir. know, I know. I came around the corner from the art department, and there was already Christmas stuff no. on sale. Yeah, bro. Shut your face. Yes, Christmas stuff it's on ridiculous. sale. Ridiculous. I think it was last year's Christmas crap. They're just trying to clear out now <laughs> we, to get we got ready last year's for Christmas more clearance. stuff. It's crazy. What kind of society we live? Okay, we got this left over from last year, so we got to get rid of this now, so that next month we can order brand new Christmas stuff. Nance. <laughs> Nance, here's the deal. We got products. We got to move now. <laughs> I mean, we got to move this. This is last year's outdated bullshit. Uh, we can slap a 75% off sticker on it. We'll mark it up 52%. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so they think they're getting a deal. And man, are we're making we profit. Getting the deal. <laughs> and, and we're crushing them and we're moving product. Moving product. Moving product. You got to get those numbers up, bro. Those <laughs> are rookie numbers. Rookie numbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this week on our uh, Libations Library, we got a great beer. It's a fruit beer. Fruit. And so here's what I'm thinking I'm thinking for the next couple weeks through September to okay. hold on to our last graphs of summer. Okay. I say we do t this week's and next week's we do fruit beers. Okay, I okay. like that. As That's, long as we can get them. Yeah, we'll hold on to summer, right? Hold on to the summers. Then the last week of September and through October into November, so through the Halloween season, I say we do Oktoberfest and pumpkin beers exclusively. So okay. We got, we got five weeks where we do, oh, and one very special seasonal beer. Seasonal. Now, we're not going to tell what it is. But there's one beer we have to have. Hopefully it comes out. I've already seen it. Okay. I've already good. seen it. Now it came in the mix pack, but I've already seen it. Okay. So we're gonna do pumpkin beers, Oktoberfest beers, and one special seasonal beer. Mm -hmm. And we might do it the first week in November because it is technically in the cold front pack. That's true. So it could be more winter-ish. That's fair. So let's do that. Okay. All right, so that's the game plan. So let's get on to our libations library for this week. Are you ready? I'm always ready. Let's hit it. Libations Library is brought to you today by Uggs. Ugg. <laughs> <laughs> Libations Library is not brought to you by Uggs. Yet. <laughs> Sponsors? <yet>. Possibly. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they have sailed on that. Yeah, well, that's their loss. It is. It Our is. numbers are climbing, bro. I tell you what, this particular beer company, this brewery, mm -hmm. has been one of my longtime companions. Yeah, so I can see that. When I was when I was first reaching out from crap beers like Keystone and Coors Light. Coors Light the spit cup, yeah. sir? Coors Light at one point, Coors Light and Shiner were like exotic beers for me. Yeah. Well, there for the longest time, Shiner was still considered an import in Texas. In Texas. Isn't that crazy? It's ridiculous. Yeah. They just said it was an import so they could charge more. Of course they it did. Was. But it is it was silly. Anyway. But this particular company, this is a Sierra Nevada brewing company, and they're out of California because Sierra Nevada. Boo. The first beer I had from them, we actually mentioned a couple episodes ago with the Centric, mm -hmm. was their pale ale. Yep. And it's a it's a light, crisp ale, 5.5%, and I fell in love with that. And then from there, I started getting into the more bitters and the IPAs and blah, blah, blah. So this, this brewery kind of has a, a sweet spot for me. Okay. So I'm curious where you're going to end up. I, I have a good feeling where I'm going to be. I have not had this beer. However, I know for a fact it's coming in with an IBU of 25. And that's getting up there past your uh, well, threshold. And, and here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. Seeing that this is a 25 IBU, I 
initially strongly already knew this was going to be maybe high 60s, oh, wow. low 70s. Just, okay. just initial seeing the IBUs. And then I got to thinking back on some of the other beers that we've had, and I was right. like, Jesus, I can't really judge a book by its cover anymore. This is yeah. this sucks. It's true. So not too long ago, I'm pretty sure it was the episode where we talked about Poseidon's Kiss. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. We did Tup's Brewery. And it was the uh, the juice pack? Or yeah, the, the fruited juice pack. So you bought it literally because of the can. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice and colorful. They, they drew me in with the colors. And because it was so fruity, you kind of liked it. And we made the, the comment then that the things that made it good for you made it bad for me and vice versa. Right. So I'm wondering if this is going to be similar. Very well could be. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how this pans out because i've not had this one yet okay this is the sierra nevada's wanderland and it's w-a-n-d so wander like wander around wanderland wander the desert for 40 years yes (laughs) i I bet they would have been more apt and more enjoyable to be around if they would have had this beer well we'll see this is a nectarine ale i am a sucker for nectarines. I'm telling you. when I loves me some nectarines. When they're in season and they're ripe, oh, mm-hmm. son. I can get I can get down on some nectarines. Yeah, I Faux actually show. I prefer nectarines over peaches. Do you? I do. Okay. Because there's only like a one-week window Agreed. in the entire year Agreed. when you can get a solid peach. Yep. And then you've got about two, three months. Basically all summer, you've got a pretty solid peach selection of nectarines okay i I agree it's it's a more hearty fruit so we're where i'm at a little bit further north from y'all uh there's there's a small i say small it's probably pretty big orchard in colorado and they bring them down and it's like for small town country folk it's Mm -hmm. it's like a big deal so it's like fredericksburg peaches kind of texas yeah (laughs) and they're like well when are the colorado peaches gonna get here there's well we got peaches in the store no 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 no, These I need Colorado the Colorado peaches. peaches. They only they only come like two weeks out of the year, and mm-hmm. so I need some. So when we went to Fredericksburg, we were about two weeks before they were doing the big uh, peach festival. Oh yeah, and they still had a bunch of like little kiosks going out okay. inside and outside of town selling uh, those peaches. Selling peaches. How were they? Shit. Oh, really? Wicked expensive, too, bro. <laughs> Dude, they wanted they wanted like $18 for maybe 12 small, and I mean small, peaches. Interesting. So yeah. they were expensive and not good. Yeah, way <laughs> too expensive and just not that great. Tourist, man. Just getting them all. <laughs> getting all right. them all. Well, I'll tell you what. So this is the Sierra Nevada Wonderland Nectarine Ale. I'm going to let you open those guys, okay. and uh, we'll we'll have a little sippy poo. Okie dokie. Ready to go? Let's do it. We're men. We're men in tights. Tights. We roam around the corner looking for fights. We're men. We're men in tights. We may look like sissies. I mean, it smells really good. Bro, that is... Uh, <laughs> it's really good. <sighs> Man, I'm I'm Ooh, almost not... Son. I'm almost not looking forward to drinking it because every time I've smelt it and it smells amazing... You let down? It, instantly punches me in the face. I don't think you're going to be let down on this one. I really don't. Um, man, I, if you... Okay, if you're out there and you need to go get you a beer and you see this on the shelf, I'd grab it. I would grab it immediately. Because that is hmm. very nice. Okay. Um, I dig it. It's growing. So it tastes like it tastes like nectarines. It tastes I, like nectarines, but tastes like nectarines in an ale. 
Yeah. And it definitely has the bitternesses there, for sure. Yeah, there's a there's a ton of bitterness. So this is a, a nectarine that was maybe two weeks too early. <laughs> maybe. I don't know, man. It's pretty sweet on the front. I, I, I'm not getting You're near not getting as the sweet? much sweetness. So I'm getting the sweet. Uh, this is a 7.5 ABV, so be careful. It's definitely up there a little bit. I mean... And I love the fact that there's a Volkswagen van on the front of the label. <laughs> I, I just dig that so much. That's hilarious. I will say the one thing that it really has going for me on my side, it's not overly carbonated. That is true. Yep. I mean, it's it's got a very nice balance of carbonation, okay. uh, which is kind of an odd thing to say, but a lot of the ales... You'll you'll drink and it's it feels like it's all bubbly in the back of your throat. Yep. This one's more more of a nice even coat. Okay. If you will. Fair enough. Um, the flavor. I get a little bit of nectarine. What are you talking about? It's it's all there. I get a little bit. Of, you're asking for my input, oh, bro. I get a little bit of nectarine, but I do get a little bit of puckerness. Okay, get a little bit of that that bitterness coming out. Yeah, I I definitely get some of the the bitterness coming through. Okay, so uh, just to remind everybody, this is an ale, and Sierra Nevada. Now we haven't had one yet. We've not done anything from Sierra Nevada, and one of the reasons I know we haven't is because their examples online is amazing. IPAs. No, no, no! All the stuff that they write about their beers. Oh, okay. It's incredible what what they've got on here. Oh, they've got, nice. They got like quotes that people have said. They talked about the the history of it. What? Uh, yeah, it's great. And then they have this wonderful little category um, that kind of gives you some information. Okay. And I did not know this, but an ale requires to to make a a, a bona fide ale. It requires a special yeast species, and okay. I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce this. Yes, I will. I'll try. It's Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and it is fermented on top. It's called top fermentation, and that's what an ale is made. Hmm. And a lager is a bottom far- fermenting. Farming. So it's a bottom. It's a bottom <laughs> feeder. You got you got a top and you got a bottom. <laughs> and guess which one we like the most. <laughs> so. There is a difference, and there's this huge article, man. There's like like three pages worth of stuff here on the differences, and I just love that, that they're so informative on their website. Damn I, it. I was really hoping that this was not going to be good. No, this one's and great. the beer gods have shined down upon us yet again. <laughs> yet again. This beer started in late 2019, and they, oh, got, wow. they got a visit from a brewmaster from the United Kingdom. Oh. They host something called a from beer across can. across the pond. A beer camp, and they invite folks to their industry to spend a few days, and they learn some stuff, and they teach some stuff. And these UK campers brainstormed these two honored recipes that they had. They had an IPA that was nectarined and a German-style Kolsch, mm. and they put them together, and this is the result. I can see that. So basically, they, they dumbed down the IPA. And, and smartened up the coals. <laughs> definitely brought up the coals because I have Which not is, had one that's been well, great. Well, on on the on the podcast, we've only done one coals. Yeah, and it was bad, if I remember. Yeah, right. and it was from Fredericksburg. Oh, that's right. It was from Fredericksburg. Yeah. So the Germans. The Germans. Yeah, they should be very good at crafting beers. <laughs> that one, not so much. <laughs> so. If you need this beer, you can go to Sierra Nevada. They have a special category that tells you how to get it. They have a beer finder. They have a place where you can order. Their website is killer, man. Nice. I'm very happy that we uh, that we logged into these guys. Go find this beer. I think it's fantastic. I'm going to give it a 92 today. Oh, my Lanta. I'm way up there. It's high ABV, and so it still has that kind of an IPA-ish kick to it. And it's super sweet, and I love the fruit. It's not overpowering. Yep. I, I, I really dig it. So the most recent sip that I took, and I don't know if it's just the fact that it's had a few more minutes to to fester, and I guess fester is not probably the right word. but they probably to, wouldn't appreciate that. To, <laughs> to marry. It's had a few more minutes to marry with the environment. I'm really liking it. Okay, so you, you kind of turned around? 
I have. Okay, that's interesting. That that last sip was straight nectarine. And now I saw you when you opened them. Did you see any particulates in it? I did not. I, I was actually I, just because of the color of the bottle, right? I and and being a nectarine, I, I was kind of expecting something to be in there, right? Yeah. So I I did kind of tip the bottle, okay, and kind of shake it just a smidge upside down, kind of like we do with blood and honey, right? Yeah. And uh, well, there was there was no particulates in it, so okay. it didn't matter. But I think I'm going to go uncharacteristically high on this one. And I'm going to give this guy a 90. Wow, into the A category. Um, so that's, that's a, definitely the first ale we've had that you've placed anywhere close. And that's probably, the, that's probably the highest IBU rating I've ever given any, anything okay. that's over 25. Well, it's right at 25. I would say your sweet spot's down there around that 10 to 12 range in the IBUs. Yeah. The, the sweet stouts and, and those type things. Which is the funny thing about this one is initially it was just a lot of bitter. Yeah. But I guess the more you get into it, it kind of mellows out. And there's there's a little bit more of that sweetness that comes out of the nectarine. Right. So I'm thoroughly digging that. All right, so I'm, I'm hoping it sticks through. <laughs> I think it will. I think it will. I think what you, now I'm just I'm talking out of my butt. Okay, I'm I'm not a beer expert at, at all. I am. I know so what I'll I, call you out. Okay, that's fine. I know what I like, um, I, and I will say that the first time I had a, a true IPA, I wasn't a huge fan. But yeah, the more I I drank them, the more nuance I was able to pick up out of them, even through the bitterness. And I don't like sweet stuff, and so it really paired with my palate well. Interesting. And so I think, in a small way, that may be what you're experiencing. You got through the bitterness initially, and you found some of those more complex flavors. Or it's very possible that a beer does open up more, like a wine does. Yeah. Because you yeah. are supposed to let it breathe. And sure. I don't know what the crap that does, but you're supposed to do that. Decants. So. Do what when it decants? Oh, that's right. Is that that's when you're supposed? That's to... That's what you do with wine. Uh, you, you throw it in a decanter. It lets, yep. it, it lets it breathe. There you go. Opens up some of the sulfites. The sulfites. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I could be bullshitting myself. No, no. It sounds right to me. Feels good. I definitely know a small yay. <laughs> We're we're beeries, remember? Oh, yeah, beeries. <laughs> All right, hey man, great beer. Make sure you mark those down and get them up on the uh, on the old ranking. Oh, most definitely, sir. And by the way, just a reminder: we we failed to mention this most most episodes. If you want to go see our rankings for all of our beers, yes. Beezy's done an amazing job of cataloging those. I mathematicate the shit out from of from the very beginning to now. Yep, you've got my ranking, you got Beezy's ranking, and you also have the McNugget ranking. Well, which goes back to episode <laughs> like one, one. <laughs> like the first 10 minutes of episode one. Yeah. Well, so. and not only that, but if we get anybody that decides they want to throw their ranking into the mix, I will calculate all the mathematicians that needs to be done. Wow. And arithmicate all the numbers to make everything reflect it. It's a lot of work, sir. It is. You're willing to sacrifice for the team. I, I am enjoying the challenge. Nice. So do it to it, Laws. All right. Go find this beer. Uh, the great thing about Sierra Nevada is it has national distribution. Yep. You can find it. You can find their stuff. And just to kick back to a few episodes ago, um, we gave a shout out to their original Pale Ale. I'll say go get it. It's it's a benchmark okay. for Pale Ales. Even, we even heard it from the brewmaster's mouth. That's true. So... Uh, it's it's pretty good, and I That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done that in a minute. Sure haven't, and I did go back and get some not too long ago. Uh, the pale ales are still in my fridge. I had one that night, and still just as good as I remember. I mean, beauty. Really good. What what's going wow. on outside? Motorcycle race. Oh, I thought it was one of our helipads coming in. Uh, coming in. No, I I put them on hiatus for the oh, summer. <laughs> Gas is too expensive. <laughs> yes, it is expensive. That is true. <laughs> All right, well, let's get out of libations. Both got great ratings, and let's go right into a little four questions. Four questions. Dad gummit, man. Every time. You suck. Every time. So the problem is on the board. You don't know how to label things? Well, I'm not even using the board. Oh. I'm using the one <laughs> on the computer. 
But you just suck. No, we've added one. And so oh. now there's two four questions. And the kicker is when I play one, it takes it off my re- You know what? Never mind. I'm just gonna play I'm just gonna play the right one. I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. Four questions. Good grief. Took all, right. all that work <laughs> just to enough. get that stupid thing played. <laughs> I hope you like it. I hope you like your four questions. <laughs> oh man, I do. Man, it's my got, favorite. We we got all heated. I need I need a little more nectarine beer. Have some of that nectarine. Calm your tits, bro. And I got a cigar today too. I know. I already smoked mine. Yeah, you had uh, your kind of your go to the go to the sweet with Jane, the sweet Jane, man. And I've got a Leva G series, which is kind of a, an inexpensive, almost a cheap cigar. It's not cheap. It's inexpensive. It's very good for the price. So I like yeah, it. that was a big stick. <laughs> <laughs> you taking a no taking a note out of Teddy's book. No con- Teddy, what are you talking about? I mean, for reals? I'm gonna quote a president. Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, carry Walks a big stick. Okay, carry right. a big stick. And for some reason I was in my mind I kept going with cigars and I was like, bro, that's Winston Churchill. He's not even American. <sighs> I don't even <laughs> man. <laughs> Right. I'm going to have to cut you off, sir. You can't have no more of that I, nectarines. I, I've had half a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's half a beer. I'm sorry, sir. Can I have another? All right. Let's do question numero uno. <coughs> i have to edit that and the ridiculous chair squeaks. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, quit moving around, you ass bag. I'm sorry. <laughs> My ass is it's, it's numb. Okay, go. All right. Question number one is coming from Matt's. Matt's. M-A-T-S. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I mean, he gets walked upon a lot, I guess. Apparently. So Matt's wants to know, what happened? <laughs> Three days ago, the tarot cards said my ex would reach out. <laughs> but today... They said that my ex wouldn't reach out. Are they your tarot cards, Matt? <laughs> he doesn't clarify, but I'm going to think maybe. So this poor guy is just sitting in his basement with a table. Mom's basement. Mom's basement. And he's got his set of tarot cards that he probably hasn't had any training with. Because, you know, there's like some wizardry stuff. you got to go to Hogwarts in order I mean, to read the cards right. It takes about two, three weeks worth of trainings. So he's You he's, can do it online. He's just a layman. He doesn't know what he's doing. <sighs> he's a layman for sure. <laughs> well, he laid on he's, the ground. He's People a, walked on him because he's a mat. He's a get no lay man. Nice. So, nice. <laughs> so he puts out the tarot cards and says something. Probably doesn't even say that, but he thinks it does. Doesn't work. So he does it again out of frustration. Mm-hmm. And then it says the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. So now he doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm doubting he ever had a girlfriend in the first place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was his girlfriend? Tally? <laughs> <laughs> you mean that uh, soft rabbit skin that you're talking about? Is your girlfriend? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, great oh, movie. Great movie. Uh, nice callback. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, bro, so first and foremost, I would say don't use your own tarot cards. Um, you you got to go get somebody to read you their tarot cards. Well, and here's the deal. If you did not use your own tarot cards nice. and you actually went to somebody and they, this was like, I went on Monday, they gave me this reading and I went on Thursday and they gave me this reading. Okay. Um, you don't pay them enough. And they don't remember you, and then that should be a pretty telltale sign that it's all bullshit. Yep. Um, That's true. <clears throat> and secondly, if you went to one tarot reading and they said, uh, yeah, oh, yo ass is going to reach out to <laughs> you. <laughs> and, and then you went to another tarot reading, and then she said, oh, <laughs> She ain't going to reach out to you. <laughs> All right. I will say. I think the Terrots is uh, a bunch of bunk. Okay. All right. So a little, a little Tom Trickery foolery there. Um. Yeah. Duh. Okay. I think it's all shenanigans. Yeah, I do too. However, there is one that for sure is legit. Miss Cleo. Not even Miss Cleo. 
Miss oh, Cle- Miss Cleo's snap. wrong sometimes. Well, so, she's been proven in the court of law. <laughs> well, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm going to go to the actual folks who can give you a psychic reading. Oh, snap. And so far in their illustrious career, they've never been wrong. Okay. Here's what you do. Nobody. Nope. You go over to Patreon. <laughs> And you join the cult of the life shippers. And if you're a life shipper, you get a monthly psychic reading yeah. from Pinewood and, and or Beezy. Beezy. And it's always correct. We, yeah. we have yet to fail. They've always been right. <laughs> the, the, the eye of the Lebowski speaks to us. Yeah, and the eye of the mini Lebowski. I can't even keep up with the eyes that we have. We got too many eyes up in that, that and they, hidden revival. And they're they're feeding us information all the time. Yeah. And we freak nope. We give that information away for twenty bucks a month. Yeah. <laughs> or five. <laughs> or five. But you don't get a you don't get a psychic reading for the five dollar level. So Do you, you not? No, I don't even man. remember our levels. Yeah, you gotta get up to the to the life shipper level. But that's the only one I know for sure. Uh, that is correct. So, Everything else, all fake. Matt, we, we've got the gift of Houdini on our side. We got the gift of foresight. <laughs> Foreskin? No. Foresight? I knew you were going to do it. I knew it was coming. I knew you could not help yourself. You well, had to it go can't, there. It can't be foreskin because we're both circumcised. We don't come from the hood. It's a broad assumption, sir. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't even go with that one. <laughs> oh, I got it. I'm just going to roll past it. Roll with the punches. Yep, I'm hoping nobody else caught it either. So, Matt, here's the deal. You got two options. Option number one, your ex wanted to contact you, and then there was a shift in the paradigms of whatever's and she said no. That's why your tarot card reading just flip floppedied. Okay. Because that will happen. That does happen. Option number two, which is probably your cheaper option, uh, become a life shipper for our Patreon at Fraternize with These Guys. And you'll get your monthly reading. We'll tell you. And we don't lie. You. We'll, we'll tell you. I mean, we won't. Well, the eyes will. The eyes the eyes will let us know <laughs> what's going to happen. All right. We have gone way too far into the weeds on the lying tarot card question. Oh, fair enough. So let's bring it <laughs> back to something we spoke about earlier with question number two. Question number two is, is there any reason or acceptability by playing Christmas music in the summer? No. Wow, that was quick. Bro. Hell no. Oh, wow. Wow. No, you get December. Just have the month of December and that's it. You get 25 days, give or take six. Okay, well, they they start playing it as soon as you finish your turkey on Thanksgiving. I know, which, playing is, Christmas which is ridiculous. Okay, I like Christmas carols. I don't care for any of them. No, no Christmas carols? Zero. None of them. Really? I will say the only ones that I do like are anything by Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Okay, that's legit. Because it doesn't really sound like Christmas music. But what about what about like Oh Holy Night, Mariah Carey, where she sings <laughs> up in the stratosphere? No, nothing? No. What? Like at all? I, I mean, no. How is that possible that you don't like I Christmas hate, music? I hate Christmas carols. How? It is the bane of my annual existence. So every <laughs> single year. Every single year is you just, you just hate your life. If I walk for 22 into days. like I, I, well, hell no, it's more than that. It's more than that. <laughs> I guarantee you, after after Halloween, yes. If I were to walk into Walmart, they're playing Christmas carols. Yeah, I, I'm with you. That's why I don't shop at okay, Walmart. Okay, what about what about this one? Does that not? That doesn't thrill your soul? Makes me want to open veins, bro. <laughs> this is the greatest song of all time. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. It's so good. <sighs> okay. So I'm fuming. Just so you know, I subject my wife to this song at least once a week. 
Just, Why? Because I love the song. It's a great That's song. That's rude. It's it's this little girl singing that she wants a hippopotamus for Christmas. Sir, it's, it's great. I do not appreciate that. <laughs> and I'm going to stop you from doing that with your wife right now. <laughs> Are you forbidding me to you, play hippopotamus for Christmas? You have forbade, sir. Dang. Hippo for Christmas. This is Hip- a good song. No. <laughs> Every week? No. No. It's, it's not once a week. But, but probably... Once a quarter, like just for random gigglies, I'll I'll break it out. I'll I don't be, even know you anymore. I'll be cooking in the kitchen. I'll just have hippo for Christmas playing. It's mm, good times. Mm, mm. All right. I don't even know you, sir. So no reason to play Christmas music outside of Christmas. No. Okay. You have the month of December, and you've already hijacked five days going from Thanksgiving into December. Yeah, but we get... We get gypped five days at the end of December, so I feel no, like no, you we're, don't horse shit. It ends December twenty fifth. That's they go, shenanigans. They go right back to playing Paul Simon like they do the rest of the year. No, they do not. They will play Christmas carols all the way up until the point that they do for all the Satan's be forgotten. <laughs> Did you just say for all the Satan's be for forgotten? For all the Satan's be forgotten. <laughs> New lyrics from Beezy the Heathen. <laughs> You're secretly paying your homage to the hey, Savior. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So no Christmas music. I will say no. I served at a church one time who did it. In, who did a three week sermon series called Christmas in July, Bruh. and it was this whole thing around the Christ of Christmas is the same. Christ all the time. It, it made sense, but he actually played one Christmas carol every service. So for three <laughs> weeks in July, we played a Christmas carol. It was pretty funny. It was oh, all right. God. You made me gassy. <laughs> <laughs> we have no airflow right now. That's true. That's and true. It that's is on you. It is cooler, but that's it's, your fault. It's not great. That's your fault. Okay. You you drew this upon yourself, sir. How, how was that? I just asked a question. You made me gassy. That doesn't make any sense. Your Christmas nonsense, you, your preemptive Christmas shenanigans made me gassy. All right. Well, I guess we can go to question number three. <laughs> but first. <laughs> uh, dude, shut it down! <laughs> I swear to God, I'll jump over this table. <laughs> I'm not even scared. <laughs> All right, man. Let's have question numero tres. Tres! This question is coming in from Celia Milton. Why did you say it like that? I don't know. I I, I rolled the R's and I just kind of went with it. I mean, it works. It It felt felt good. I'm not going to lie. A little strange. Okay, go. So Celia Milton wants to know, I'm 25 and I'm economically independent. I live with my mother. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. I live with my mother, but he I wants want to move out. for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's the end of the question. I live with my mom, and I want a hippo for Christmas. I'll punch you in the <laughs> face where you stand, sir. <laughs> well, well, how do you dependent if you live with your mother? That's Econ- not even a thing. Economically dependent. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, finish the question. I want to move out. <laughs> With what? Because she's way too controlling. <laughs> See, she, she, she says she saw stand by she shorts. <laughs> yes. She said she won't talk to me if I move out. What should I do? Dang. She went, she went straight manipulation. Get on it. She went straight. We're done. She F that hippo. Wow. Okay, so he or she? I, I, I it's a. Sh- I would assume you rolled your she. R's, and I, I couldn't understand. I th- there's no rolled R in Celia Milton. Okay, I Celia. Just, yeah, well, I just forgot what you said. Okay, so young lady. Mm-hmm. Well, not that 25. young. Twenty five. I mean, she's she's anyway. Okay, so she's claiming that she's economically independent. Economically independent, yes. But she lives with her mom. Mm -hmm. She wants to move out. So I would assume she has the means to move out. Well, this is going to be a really quick turn of events to find out how economically independent she is. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I'm moving out, Mom. 
All right, well, get on it. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Well, it doesn't sound like the mom's being very uh, cordial in this particular arrangement. Well, yeah, there is that. It sounds to me like she's very... Kind of controlling? Yeah, very much so. Yeah? So, I don't know. I mean, she says she won't talk to me if if I were to move out. So... So, what is the question? Should she move out? What should I do? Hmm. I mean, you, you, look. You gotta, you gotta get. You <laughs> gotta get what I'm getting is good. You probably should have. You probably should have done been getting like five years ago. Yeah, I mean, if and there are reasons. I know, I know. So look, let's let's give the benefit of the. We'll doubt. go back. To many episodes back when we talked about this. But there are reasons to be fiscally responsible. And it's beneficial for both parties. Can be. Can be. It doesn't sound like this is beneficial. Sounds like this is a weird relationship Well, that that a mom can't let her daughter go. At this particular moment in time, I don't think the fiscal responsibility is going to be on anybody i mean she's she can't technically be considered a dependent no she if hasn't she's been a dependent. not going to school anymore now it, you if, mm. if you're you're a dependent if you live at home okay and you can go i think in texas i think it's up to 24 25 as long as you're in school and up to a certain age limit okay it's national so it, it's oh, okay that's irs you, you can still live at home it's a 26 right or 27 I don't even remember. Okay. 25, 26, 27. In that range. I think Obama changed that. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. I guess I'm, I'm hung up on the... let. Okay, let's give the benefit of the doubt. Let's say she went to college, she okay. stayed at home to save money, which is respectable. I get it. And if your parents are willing to do that, cool. Yeah. Right? Okay. Hell yeah. No it's problem It's a with benefit that. for both parties. Okay. Now... You're 25. Again, let's assume here. Okay. She's out in the world. She's making money. Sowing her oats. She, well, not only that, but apparently she's responsible enough to be able to move out. Mm-hmm. So let's just assume that. Okay. But she's she's faced with the quandary of if I leave, well, I'm going to strain the relationship, relationship between me and my mom. You know, relationships need to strain occasionally. I agree 100%. I really do. I, and, and especially in this case, I, I think you need to... Yeah, you, need you to test flex. the bounds. Yep. yep. Yeah. Not only test, I think you need to break those uh, those constraints. Flex that muscle. Be oh like, look, here's the deal. Sorry. Sorry's about you, man. But uh, I'm Audi. Yep. Audi 5000. Yep. And I would imagine, since she didn't mention a father figure, I would imagine her mom's a divorcee. Yeah. Probably is looking at being lonely. Sure. Emptiness. Yep. All to the that, nth degree. All that stuff. And so I think there's some issues going on in your relationship. There's probably some issues with your mom that she's going to have to work through. And my opinion would be you got to rip the Band-Aid off. Yep, and then and then deal with the situation afterwards. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You could go the opposite route, which is kind of sort of soften the situation, slowly tear the bandaid off. Yeah, and I don't like that. I don't, I don't like either. That. You've you had five years to do that. You've had arguably seven years to do that. Yeah, arguably. So I no, I it's time. Yeah, Tw- twenty five time. <laughs> Shit or get off the pot. Yep. <laughs> I yep. mean, time to go. Yeah, time I say, to go, Celia. I say go right on ahead. Move out, even if it's just down the street, but move out. You, you need to be your own person. Yeah, I mean, you, we're not telling you to a 100% forego any any collusion with your parents. Of course. Or parent, whatever yep. the situation yep. may be. Still be cordial, still be loving, still be nice, still do all the daughterly things that you yeah. have always done. Do you, you just don't. You just don't live there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be good for you, and it's going to be good for your mom. It's going to be excellent for you. Yeah. This is how you are now going to progress further into your adulthood level. Yeah. <laughs> and you're already behind. So yeah, he's uh, way behind. <laughs> get get steppins. Get steppins. All right. We have solved her particular issue. Let's go on to question four. 
Oh, are we already there? Are you good with that? Oh, do it. All right. All right, question four comes from Jason. And Jason doesn't give his last name. And it's a good thing that he doesn't give his last name because probably people online would find him and maybe hurt him. <laughs> All right, then. He, he asked, and by the way, he asked this in the pets section of Yahoo Answers. Okay. Now, it will kind of make sense at the end, but it's also strange. I mean, you can see where this goes. All right. Jason asked, I wanted to see if my computer could read my credit card for an online purchase. <laughs> so, I opened the CD-ROM and inserted the credit card. Now it's stuck in there. I attempted to get it out with toothpicks, and now they're stuck in there. The computer is also making weird noises. What should I do? I still desperately need to pay for my online cat food order. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... So that's why it lands in that category. It, 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 it makes sense, I guess. I mean, you know, you're typing a long, you find find your cat, your cat food, right? And you try to order it and you put your credit card in the (laughs) CD-ROM drive and it doesn't work. And so you go back on lines. And and by the way, who still has a CD-ROM drive? Who has a (laughs) CD-ROM? That was my thing. When I rebuilt. This is not from like seven years ago. This is from just just a few months ago. Oh, Jesus. I rebuilt my computer not too long ago. And. I didn't even put a CD-ROM drive in there. Hmm. Because nobody freaking uses it. It's true. Everything is online. Everything's digital. Yeah. Uh, it's transferable. Yes. Huge files can be transferred via Google Drive. Yeah, exactly. We we do that on a weekly basis with the podcast. You almost don't... You don't even need flash drives anymore. No. I mean, Most we, of the time, flash drives are even more of a hassle to deal with because you got to transport it yep. to that said location. Yep. Now, we are using and have used the, the SD cards a lot. Well, yeah. Through recording and through uh, well cameras and you know the YouTube channel that I do and stuff sure. like that. Yeah, we're definitely transferring data, but we're transferring like another piece of equipment our, to the our data. Our data to another piece of our data. That's right. For further data transfer. <laughs> and not only that, the roadcast that we use for podcasting, the Zoom that we use for podcasting, my camera that I use for the YouTube. Yep. All of that stuff can be connected Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. All of it. And, and, and all of it can be transferred. So anyway, I, I got off on a tangent. So, okay, first and foremost, he puts his credit card in the CD-ROM drive and then... He tries to get it out with toothpicks, <laughs> and and then they get stuck in the computer. So here's the deal. I'm going to call bullshit. Okay. Okay. So now you're thinking a man that is so smart that he put a credit card in the CD-ROM drive could not also lose toothpicks in his computer. Here's the deal. The way a CD-ROM drive works is that is a very concise package. So when when the drive opens, right, you have a very finite space to slap your disc in there. That was a euphemism. <laughs> You're welcome for me coming up with the word for you. Oh, okay. <sighs> All right, keep going. Sorry. So you, I, you, I, s- I, <laughs> you slap the disc in and it closes. If you put something that does not fit into that drive, it'll still close. When it goes up to catch the disc, it's a little cylinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. That goes up. You you got a little circle that pops into the center circle. Gosh, bro. (laughs) So when that doesn't happen, what happens is it starts spinning really fast. Right. It realizes it cannot read a disc, right. so it drops the middle circle, uh, okay. ejects, hmm. and at that point, there's not a whole lot of room for the disk drive to shoot a credit card. Okay. What so, if you placed it right in the middle, and when it goes in, it does spin, and it just spins the credit card off into the machine? You know, and... and I'm accounting for that. Okay. I'm still calling bullshit. Okay. I'm with because you. Because if, if it opens at all, 
right? You still have a reasonable way to access. And that's where I would assume his chopsticks or whatever the hell you said it was. Uh, the toothpick, sir. Toothpick. Well, who the hell uses toothpicks anyways? You can't do shit with a toothpick. Well, you can get stuff out of your tooths. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. Grow up and get those little little toothpick thingies that have the little floss bit on the oh. ends of it. <laughs> a little floss. You're an adult. You're an adult now. <laughs> Time to grow I've, up. I've seen much more adults, much more. I've seen many more adults use toothpicks than I have seen use the little floss sticks. Well, yeah, they're ridiculous. And they don't even know I have anything. it on pretty good authority from my dentist that uh, the floss sticks are for children. They feel good. <laughs> I got like a 7,000 count in my kitchen what right if, now. What if you put you put the card in, you shut it, and it tries to open back, but it wedges like whenever you have a spatula in your drawer. A spatula? Yeah, it wedges just right so it won't open. And so it's, it's just barely open. So he gets some toothpicks to try to get the card out of the wedge situation. Yeah, but the way the, 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 way the ROM drive will work is what it's going to do is it'll open... If it gets wedged, it closes. Okay, but I'm saying... So when it closes, it's, it's it's instinctually going to push that card back to where it makes it an accessible... What if it's a magic CD-ROM drive? Oh, shit. I didn't even think about that. What if it's a CD-ROM drive that also reads tarot cards? <sighs> well, And it's trying to collect payment via his credit card. Well, that's the reason why his... His ex didn't show up that next week. I'm gonna go with he never had a girlfriend. I think I think that's fair. All right. <laughs> okay. So uh, bottom line, you're an idiot. Yes. And a Todd Tom, and um, your cat should probably leave you. If you can't, if you figure tell out me how that your cat cat food online, your cat's got no business with you. If you tell me that your cat's vegan, I'm probably going to punch you in the face. <laughs> well, he didn't say that. But not only Might is as it, well. Not only he's is trying his, to buy cat food online. It's worse. Not only is his cat maybe or maybe not vegan, the poor cat can't eat. No, 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 no. You already know this cat is a vegan cat. It's possible. By the way. Because you can buy cat food literally anywhere. Dollar Gentral. Maybe he's scared to get outside. Amazon. Maybe he's worried about the COVID. It's Am- not even real. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Dim's joke. <so. laughs> Ooh, that comment right there just stirred some shit. Yep, we're, we're going to get canceled, bro. Ooh, um, we. Maybe we should look into that whole sovereign citizen thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, man, good four questions. I really enjoyed it, especially the Christmas music. And uh, definitely going to have to bring back the hip. If you play that shit again, I will punch you in the face. I'll tell you what. I'm not going to play it this episode. But when you least expect it, it's coming back. It better not. I will. I'm. I'm going to have an arsenal of bottle caps. And I'm going to flick that shit at you as soon as that comes on. Okay, well, I look forward to that particular circumstance. I already know it's coming up in this episode just because I know you. I doubt it. It's going to come up when you least expect it. Okay, so let's get out of here and let's go on to Cinemize. But before we get to Cinemize, let's take a moment to hear from our affiliates. Let's face it, man. That rambunctious stench that's been ruminating in your boxer shorts for most of the day isn't something to be proud of. And historically, that particular sweaty unpleasantness has just been a living hallmark of the hardworking man you are. Hi, I'm Beezy the Heathen, and this sad sweaty sack next to me is Pastor Pinewood. Hi. And I gotta say, buddy, you smell like what crawls from a dead skunk's ass in summer. Now, I have already discovered the key to maintaining a glorious smelling undercarriage that, regardless of the rigors and toils of a strenuous workday, keeps me fresh and confident for hours. It's like a thousand sweet smelling angels are gingerly caressing my most delicate man bits in my darkest of times. Man, that sounds amazing. Because usually I just silently suffer until quitting time when I can get out of my sweat drenched underwear and remove the fully baked medicated powder biscuits that have formed in my nether regions. Beezy, I want to be like you. Don't worry, baby bird. Old Beezy is going to show you exactly how it's done. 
For a limited time, you and all of our listeners have exclusive access to a -a one-of-a-kind company that specializes in everything to keep that funk off your junk. I'm talking, of course, about Ballsy. Go to ballwash.com and peruse their scrotal sanctifications. There's the Ball Wash Body Wash for your pits and where you sit. The Ball Guard Liquid Powder to keep those ball biscuits that you struggle with from ever baking. And my personal favorite, the Nut Rub, which keeps your family jewels looking and smelling regal. With all these products and more, there's nothing standing in the way of you smelling, looking, and feeling absolutely amazing south of your equator. Head to ballwash.com and use promo code FWTG15 at checkout. You'll get 15% off your purchase. Hurry out and get it handled today. And Pinewood, trust me on this, your colleagues will thank you, your wife will thank you, and maybe most important of all, you will be forever thanked by your manly spunk bunkers. BZ, you're absolutely right. Ballsy is amazing. I'm so glad you turned me on to them and their products. Hey, just wait until I tell you about the shampoo and deodorant so we can tackle that hot mess you got going up on the top half. Now visit ballwash.com today and save. Hey, Pywin, what you drinking? Well, I felt like something a little fruity, so I got me a mango IPA. Get that crap out of here! Hey, bro, what what the French, man? You gotta give this Coco Cocktail a try. What is it, a, a Coco Connection? Nah, bro, come on. It's Coco Cocktail. It's the newest craze in the seltzer game. It's a vitamin-infused, all-natural, non-GMO, spiked, sparkling coconut water. It's literally, literally the future of alcohol. Come on, man, the future of alcohol, that... that... That's a little heavy-handed. Bro, I'm telling you, even the aliens are drinking this stuff. You mean you mean like the space lizards? <laughs> like the space lizards? <laughs> oh, dude, you know what? We should totally stock up on this for the life ship. Ooh. I mean, the people are going to want a sweet, tasty beverage. Eh? We got to give the people what they want. Got to give them the best, bro. Well, Hellfire, you won me over. Let me try that thing. Well, dang, son, that's delicious. I don't know why you had to use all those high flute and flowery words, but that key lime seltzer speaks for itself. Well, I tell you what's even better. All of our listeners get a banging discount when they order on Coco Cocktail's website. Well, shoot, man, what's that website? That website is www.cococktail.com. That is C-O-C-O-C-O-C-K-T-A-I-L.com. And enter promo code FWTG7 when you order an 8-pack, and FWTG12 when you order a 24-pack. Do I uh, do I get that discount when I order? I mean, so long as you use the uh, promo codes, I don't see why you wouldn't. Do you think oh, uh, Coco Cocktails would send me that koozie? Yeah, that, that's going to be a hard no, bro. <laughs> Coco Cocktail is an alcoholic beverage, and you must be 21 years old to enjoy, and please drink responsibly. Now get on them interwebs and order you some, you plumptable some bitches, and cheers to your health. In addition to our affiliates, we also have some pretty exciting news. We're going to do our first giveaway. Yes, I know. Well, I guess two. Yeah, we got two winners. Those giveaways. Now, you're all winners. Everybody is. Well, if you're listening. Most of y'all are winners. <laughs> but there's two winners today. They're going to walk away with a $25 Amazon gift card that we will send you in the mail. But there's a couple of rules. The two winners had to follow had to fall into one of two camps. What, would you say a caveat? Nope. I'm not going to say it. Okay. I haven't Damn. said it all episode. And I'm not going to say it. Damn it. So here's the deal. If you, if you wanted to win, you had to do one of two things. Now, you could have increased your chances and done both things. Yeah. But you had to do at least one of, or of two things. The first one is you had to go to our website and give us your email address. Yep. And then we will choose at random which one wins from that list. Yes. And I will say that's the shorter list. That is the shorter list. So when we do this in the future, which we will do again, yes. go over and leave your email because it will give you a better chance Agreed. of winning by quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, you, you substantially increase your odds. The other way to win was to be in the Cult of the Life Ship group on Facebook. Correct. So you got about a 1 in 121 shot over there and about a 1 in, what, 10 on the other 15, one. 15, <laughs> 20. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Let's do the Cult of the Life Ship first. Okay. And so I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give you a little cue, and then you read the winner at random. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. 
I'm really hoping we got a drum roll. Yes. Michael Williams. I played the drums again. I kind of you sucked it up on that one, bro. (laughs) All right, so Michael Williams wins out of the cult of the Life Shippers group. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that you're listening to this. Yes, and this is the only way you're gonna know is if you're listening. That's correct. So if you're listening, what we need you to do is just to go to the website and send us a voicemail. And literally, all you have to say is, "My name is Michael." And I won. That's all you got to say. <laughs> and then give us your address, and we'll send you this Amazon gift card. Correct, sir. All right, so let's go over to the other one, which is the email addresses left on the website. Let's do the same thing. Let me give you a little drum roll action. Kimberly Oldfield, you sucked it up again. <laughs> it has a loop, and I'm trying to catch it, but I keep missing it every you, time. Your click's too slow. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do better. So who won? Kimberly Oldfield. Whoa, did you just call her old, bro? I didn't. I mean, it's in her last name. It's not my bad. Wow. I it was in it, her last name. I thought it was Oilfield, and she was named after what made her parents rich. <laughs> I mean, maybe it is. Kimberly Oilfield. <laughs> All right, so... Kim- that way I'm not calling you old. Okay, Kimberly Oil or Oldfield. <laughs> if you are listening, you need to go to the website and leave us a voicemail, and we will shoot you that gift card, and we'll do this again in about a month. Yes. And we might even up the amount. Ooh. So be paying attention. And remember, the key is you have to listen. To yeah, the episode. We're that's not gonna, how you're. That's the only way you're going to find out if you actually won. We're not going to give that information away any other way. Well, this week's episode is brought to you by (laughs) Uggs. I wish it was brought to you by Uggs. I'd like to get some of that Ugg scratch. (laughs) I'd like to get some of those diaper feet covers scratch. (laughs) I will say, uh, OBZ has done something that um, is kind of typical, but I don't see every week. Kind of typical, but... Okay. BC has finished his beer. Okay. And has opened another beer. Okay. And not only has he opened another beer, it's another like 24 ounce beer. Oh, yeah. And well, and it's it's a hefty beer. It is the creme de la creme. So tell us what it is. This Quickly. is the FMJ Stout double barrel aged in Willet bourbon barrels. From Eccentric Brewing. Yep. This is my special, my special bottle. Your special bottle made for you special. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but they gave it to me special. All right. So if uh, if Beezy starts talking a little loopy, yep, you'll know. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. So this question was, uh, I came up with this question. And the reason I wanted to ask it is, when we are in public, we're in a group setting, we're with friends, public, whatever it is, hanging out. Uh, in the past, we, you know, we, we used to go to like the pool, the pool hall, mm-hmm. you know, hanging out with a bunch of guys or whatever it was. And, and we'd always, always, always come to movies. Sure. It seems like we're always talking about kind of the same sort of movies over and over and over again, which, mm-hmm. you know, you that's got, how we do. It is. You got movies you gravitate towards. Sure. And, and that's that's just kind of the way it goes. Music's the same way. You got music you gravitate towards. Of course. Okay, so if you had to boil it down to the three movies that you recommend to people the most. So in conversation, when movies come up, what are the three movies that you talk about more than other movies? These are mm. the three in your arsenal. They're always in your quiver. You can always fire that shot. You can quote mm-hmm. them, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. So what do you think? I've got three in my caveat. Ooh, I was going to go with another term. Oh, okay. Well, can you give me the term first? The runner-up. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I also have three in a reserve. Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay. So, so you want to go first? No, I want to hear yours. Okay. So my three, Braveheart number one. 
Really? I don't know why, but it, it's a quintessential movie for me because of my upbringing through high school. I had huh. I had two copies of, of VHS Braveheart. Right, the two the two VHSs. Yep, but I had two copies, so I had four. So you had four VHSs, four of, VHSs, and of two of the same movie. And I'm <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm pretty sure my sister still has it. I also had a double VHS set of Braveheart in French. What? Yes, and we would watch that on occasion. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. That's yes. ridiculous. One summer. My dad moved us to DFW. He okay. moved us right at the end of the school year. And, of course, we had the summer, right? Sure. In a new place. I'd moved from Podunk, Texas to a pretty large... Metropolis. Yeah. And I didn't have anything to do. And my sister and I, I'm not kidding, we watched Braveheart every single day. Mm. This was this was before the... Int- we didn't have the internet. At the end of what the, the fuck's the internet? <laughs> at the end of the summer, we got a computer and got Napster. Oh, so that, snap. That took so on some. Uh, you that's know. how you ruined a couple computers. Yep. Yep. <laughs> definitely. Well, I, I didn't. I never had LiveWire, so thankfully it wasn't Lime. Uh, oh, Lime. I'm sorry. So I never had that. But anyway, so all summer, however many days that is, we watched Braveheart. So that always seems to come up in conversation. Interesting. Just love that movie. Secondly, is Grandma's Boy. <laughs> and it's just one of those films, man. It's it's always a comeback to. It's so good, is it not? It's so good. And as much as I love the classic Adam Sandler movies, mm-hmm. and believe me, I do. But there's something about Grandma's Boy that just it inches them out. I don't know why. It hits a new level. I think, or a different level. It's just something different. Yeah, because the Sandler, the Sandler era that we grew up in, the was, great era. Yeah, well, undoubtedly, sure. The the dumb slapstick humor that was. I mean, there was a carbon copy throughout. Most of those eras, yep. or most of those movies in right. that era. And by the way, the reason we bring that up is because Grandma's Boy was made by the Sandler. Happy Madison Productions. <laughs> and so you see all the same character, well, several yeah. of the same characters, uh, and, and, and it's a great film. That's, that's how you keep your friends in the loop. That's right. <laughs> and by the way, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. If you haven't seen it, I don't even know how you've made it this far into the podcast. Yep, I agree. Because so, my gourd. It's good, for sure. Okay, so that's number two. All right. All right. I'll take that one. Oh, sorry. Wow. I'll See, take that sloppy one. Sloppy already. I mean, you just... <laughs> Brandon has two drinks of his other beer. Two drinks of the FMJs. <laughs> All right. Number three, Glory. Boy. Come with a powerhouse, bro. Dude. Roderick, what's what's uh, Yules? What's that guy's name from Carrie uh, Yules? Freaking Morgan Freeman. Yeah, Denzel Washington. Dude, you really cannot go wrong Ooh, with son. probably one of the greatest casted movies. Yep. In what was that late nineties? Yeah, or early nineties. So. Early nineties. Mid nineties. I don't know. I have to look it up. But <sighs> the cast is amazing. The score is amazing. We talked yes. about composers a couple episodes yeah, a ago. Yeah, a couple episodes back. I mean, it's just the whole thing is so good. And the story's true. Yeah. It's inspirational. It, it's it's all there is to be in a movie. It's got it. Yeah. It's really good. Daggum, man. That's a good one. So that's number three. And then my runner-up. Okay. You're going to make fun of me. Probably. And I really even hate to say it. You probably shouldn't then. <laughs> I'm going to just for the uh, for the listeners. Amelie, bro. Yeah, man, it's good. It's such a good. No, movie. it's not. It's a great film. It's it's classy. <laughs> it's thought provoking. It, it the the cin- the cinematography no. is amazing. The music's good. It's so good. So good. And it's in French. You know, I can't give you too much shit because this is... <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. This is the three movies that you 
recommend to people. And I already know that is a movie. And I've tried to watch it with you. Yeah. And I refuse. I it's know. it's a shit movie. Well, maybe in my eyes. Maybe tonight, after you've had one of those FMJs, maybe you can get through it. Nope. Nope. I, I tell you what. It. It's better than Pig. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's definitely I'm, better I'm than Pig. I might put Pig <laughs> on a on a one step higher. Dang, son, that's messed up. All right, well, let's turn the tables. Let's let's, right. let's hear your three. Okay, so for me, I feel like this was just a redundancy from the last forty episodes that we've done. I got to go with the number one that I recommend to people because nobody's ever heard of it is Run, Ronnie, Run. It's true. Yep. I'm with you. And it's a great film. The cast is ungodly amazing. I love I love the fact that the cast, none of them are quintessential to the movie. Yeah, exactly. But when they show up, you're like... Oh my Holy shit! <laughs> this is okay. Jack Black's in this movie. Yep. Jeff, Jeff Goldenstein. Goldenstein? <laughs> you too, Jeff Goldenstein. <laughs> just, yep. just the cast alone. Yep, a ton makes, of comedians are in it. It's y- yes, very, very good. It literally spans probably the last twenty years worth of decent comedic movies. Yep. And everybody's got some part of something in it. Yeah, and I love the fact... Okay, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't remember his name. But the guy that plays Better Call Saul and also was in Breaking Bad... Uh, Bob Odenkirk. Okay, so his role yes, in that movie... is like the number two character in the movie. If you don't think he's a good actor... Watch it. You need to watch Run, Run, Run. Yes. It's, it's so weirdly out of character <laughs> in such a bonkers role. You're like, you don't even realize that it's him. Because yeah. it's such a weird character. Yeah. And even going back and watching it, you're like, oh my, it, it doesn't even seem like the same dude. But I'll tell you what's even funnier is you go back, if, if you were to watch Run, Ronnie, Run, and then immediately follow that up and watch uh, Loser, I think is the name of the movie. Oh my god! Okay, it, it is brilliant. All right, I'll take your word for it. Have you not seen Loser yet? If I haven't, I don't remember it, dude. Okay, all right. it's a new release. Highly recommend everybody go out and see it. And I'm going to give you Bob Odenkirk. Yep, and Christopher Lloyd. Hmm. Those two names right there should just spark. A heavy interest. Yep, for sure. So, them's two right there. But my number one, Run, Ronnie, Run. Okay, fair. Okay. Number two, and I've got so much shit for saying this movie. Yep, I know exactly where you're going. Willow. Yep. Because here's the deal. I recommend this movie to so many freaking people because so many freaking people have not seen this movie. Will is one of those movies that you need to watch once, and that's it. This is the precursor. <laughs> this is the precursor to, to what? C- to crap to movies? Cinematics <laughs> on how the Lord of Your Shit Rings <laughs> was supposed to be played out, bro. Them's fighting words. I'll kill you right now. Bring it in your in your stupor that you're bringing to the table right now. I'll kill you. Stupor's not there. <laughs> <laughs> Stupor is not there. I'm going to call out uh, a couple of friends we got that are heavy, heavy into the Lord of the Rings. Daniel is number one. Okay. And I'm pretty sure Daniel is going to vouch for me. There's no say, way to put those two films on any kind of equal terracing. No, 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 no. What, what I'm saying is Willow is the precursor to what led to the major success that Lord of the Rings became. That's nonsense. Or shit, it's not nonsense. Three people have seen Willow. Three people. Negative. You've got the Dark Crystal, you've got the Labyrinth, you got freaking Fraggle Rock influencing Lord of the Rings before Willow. No! The only thing that saves... It's literally no. done by Lucas Arts. No, the only thing that saves Willow is Val Kilmer. That's the only thing that saves that film. And I figured you were going to say something else like a normal person would say 
the fucking LP. No, I'm, I'm saying he, he brings nothing to the show other than his character. And it's not <sighs> even a good character. It's <sighs> drab. It's not fun. They literally put an entire movie, yeah. an entire sequence, which took Lord of the Rings nine decades or whatever. That's <laughs> what, what it feels like. like. When you're watching the movie, it's nine decades worth of shit. Well, I mean, it took a long time. Yeah, I don't want to watch every fucking footstep. <laughs> you need to calm down. You get so uptight. Hey, you worked up, man. Talk shit on Willow. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll throw some bows. I ain't even afraid. Do I need to bring up that you should read the book before you watch the movie? Do I need to bring that up? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> All right. Calm down, BZ. Get to number three. Let this one go, and we'll we'll address it another time. This shit's coming back up in the post. <laughs> so is Hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> if it does, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw punches. Okay, fair enough. Go on. All right, so my number three. Blood in, blood out. Wow. And now, I did not expect that at all. I don't know. I I feel like this is a movie that is known about by the general public, but not seen by the general public. Because if you go and you type a blood in, blood out, if you're going to send a GIF... Yeah. And it throws a litany of things down. And 99% of the time, if you throw something for a movie title, it's going to have something if it's been sent out a bet. Okay. So you're saying it's a well known movie? Ish, maybe. I would say it's well known. Um, it's also. I feel like it's a well known, but not well seen. Okay. All right. It's an epic movie, it is brilliant. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I guess I forget about it. I, don't, I forget how good it is. Yeah. And I think maybe, now this is just me kind of thinking off the cuff. It's possible that it has something to do with the length of the movie. Well, it's nowhere near the length of the Lord of the Rings saga. I, I know, I know. I don't it's know. It's all about a prison. Yeah. And it's rough, too. There's there's some very rough stuff within that movie. And it's one of those movies that that maybe turns people off because of that. And well, and it very well could be. However, one of <laughs> probably one of the greatest films in the last 20, 30 years that very few people have seen that I'm like, bro, have you not seen this movie? have to see it right blood in blood out i will tell you something else and this would this comes from my time in albuquerque in an hispanic <laughs> in an hispanic church i think that's where it was filmed <laughs> may have been yeah all right. i know i wouldn't disagree but possibly what you're dealing with is white people haven't seen it well i mean in all seriousness yeah there's that too so i think i think it's a cultural thing yeah when when, when could you're, be yeah, it's it's their calling card, and uh, I don't mean to say them, you know, you people. Oh, right? <laughs> what do you mean, you people? <laughs> uh, but it's it's a different culture. It's a different subtext of, of how how people live their lives, and you know, for some, it's kind of it's kind of like uh, for some people, it's kind of like a symbolic gesture within the film, like a symbology. No, not some. <laughs> I'm not sure that works. The symbology. Symbolism. I'm going to need somebody to check that out. Symbology. <laughs> All right. So you got three. And that I think. Movie. I that think. Was another movie quote. Was it? And you whiffed it. I did. It's what you say is the sim- symbology of this. I don't know, bro. I think the word you're looking for is symbolism. All right. Let's go on. So, Boondock Saints, bro. I don't know, man. I missed it. Sorry. Shenanigans. That's another one we should have said. <sighs> hey, you know what? I think most everybody's seen that one, though. Because we hang out with white people. Most white yeah. people have seen that because, you know, it's Irish. White people. <laughs> All right, you've got to the closest color. You've had three, and you, okay. you, you got one in the running? Because I had one in the running. <sighs> one in the running mm-hmm. was actually Boondock Saints. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> All right. 
Who was kind of lead one into the other. Can't go wrong with that. You really can't. Moon Knight Saints, if you've not seen it, I recommend the first one. Don't go see the second one. I don't know. I second one is decent. I say I say see it. But I feel like they've tried to do too much of what everybody does on a sequel and carbon copy the first with too many similarities going from the first to the second. Right, right. What made the first Right. so successful and then they try to carry that over into the second yeah maybe and it so. really just ruins it okay all right well i tell you what i would do if i was instructing somebody go watch the first one for sure yeah then watch the second one then forget about the second one and go watch the first <laughs> one again then go re-watch <laughs> the first one that's what i would do and focus on the cat scene <laughs> i mean it's just it's one of the greatest scenes of all it all cinematic, cinematic history. history. Yeah, it's very, very good. Fair right. enough. We're a little long. I thought that was going to be a shorter uh, segment, but uh, we get we get well, excited, that's what she said. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not what she said. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Let's get into a little thank you blinders. Thank you blinders. Thank you, Blinders is brought to you by Uggs. Uh. <laughs> this is not going to get old. <laughs> All right. We're running long, so let's... let's that's what she said. That's definitely not what she said, bro. Well, not for me. You got you to lay off the stouts, man. That's what she said for you. All right, fair. That's not fair. That's mean. <laughs> that's just mean. This, this is what that is. All right. Thank you, Blinders. I'm going to go first this week. Okay. And then you can go second because uh, you deserve to go second. No, fair enough. I'll take it. I've got a would you rather for your thank oh, you. Oh, no. But it's it's really good for us listening. Okay. It's really bad for you. For me? It. Yep. Ah, oh, splendid. All right. My Here, favorites. Situation. You can no longer take showers. You have to take baths. Okay. Would you rather, for the rest of your life, be bathed by your mother or your grandmother? Grandmother. Really? Yep. She's not going to be around as long. (laughs) (laughs) You're hedging your bet, huh? Hells yeah. I mean, I'm going to take the long haul on this one. Okay. Which is the short haul. All right. So basically, old grandmommy, she ain't going to stick around near as long as mom is. Okay. And granted, mom's done seen my everythings so growing is, up and so such. So is grandma, probably. Uh, Not as much, Not obviously. as much, but, I mean, the older you get, hopefully she gets a little case of the, uh, the seniles. Right. Right. And then she's like, oh, yeah, just seen to do with a huge package. And uh, <laughs> I had to give him a bath today. I mean, oh, that is it's part of my life. That's messed up, bro. It's like, yeah, he's really not having a huge package. <laughs> but but, you but thanks, Granny. Oh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, that's a, good, that's a good dive bomb for the worst. Well, that was your fault. I guess. You picked it. You're, you're not even consider the fact that you're being bathed by your grandmother? It's my my grandmother or my mother. Yeah, I, I, it, it was just a quick answer. I'm I was just curious why grandmother, hands well, down, she probably <laughs> won't remember it. Well, you're assuming that there might there might be years that she does. Well, she won't remember them near as long <laughs> as my mother will. All right, what if what if uh, life and death isn't a factor? What if it's just for the remainder of your life? Like your grandmother just miraculously just lives. lives as long as I do. And, and the only reason she lives is to give you a bath on a daily basis. Grandmother. <laughs> okay. She's a senile old bat. <laughs> so, there's a reason we put her in a home. <laughs> All right. So you're going to have to go with her to the home. You're going to have to go in there and take baths every day. I mean, whatever. I mean, it makes bath time easier. Ooh. I ain't got to do nothing. Wow. Okay, I was, I was just surprised at uh, the, the, the quickness of your answer. Well, where would you go on this? Well, at, at first, I would say, hmm, 
And then I would think about it for a moment, and then I would let the disgust. What's to think about? I'm just saying, I, I you would let the thing kind of wash over you and figure out like what's going on, address the situation. It, it would take a moment to process. How how do you have to process time? Well, I'm I, I'm saying that time isn't a factor. Like it's going to happen for the rest of your life. This is what's going to happen. Well, you change that later in the fact. Well, I, that's true. That's but true, originally it was. I mean. Here it is. I said for the rest of your life, though. For the rest of my life, uh, statistically, I will outlive my mother and my grandmother. I, I know, but even more statistically, I'm going to outlive my grandmother over my mother. Okay, so you're just banking on the on the years involved. I'm just hitting the numbers, baby. I'm All going right. to the slot machines. So, what you would rather have ten years of baths by your grandmother? Sure. Then 30 years of baths by your mother. Yeah. But what happens when your grandmother dies and your mom just, like, tags in? Well, that's her fault. She <laughs> she's, she is no longer grandmother. Okay. She doesn't upgrade. Okay, well. So, uh, Pentance succeeded. What if it was a bad curse and your mom had to bathe your daughter for the rest of her life? Not my problem at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done my penance. All right. Fun until you're five. Really, really weird for the next 50 years. <laughs> oh, dating's going to be really weird. Hey, baby, you want to come in and take a bath together? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I mean, we can, but there's going to be a third party. I mean, mom's going to be there. <laughs> Just saying. You ain't gonna won't be there for that one. She won't let me move out. She won't talk to me anymore. But she's still gonna have to bathe me. <laughs> so it's gonna be weird. All right, very good. What's what's uh, what's yours? All right, so this is an interesting one. A bit of a quandary for American society. Okay, why is it cruel to eat dogs and cats? but perfectly acceptable for many people to eat pigs when they're very intelligent. Culture. That's all it is. Yeah. I, I personally believe that's all it is. Um, I eat them all. I don't give a shit. Well, I've eaten Chinese food. Well, I mean, you might assume you've eaten some things other than uh, pigs, and, pigs and beefs, right? Um, <laughs> pigs, chickens... Dogs, cats. You got greens, beans, <laughs> potatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> greens, beans, <laughs> parrots, and carrots. <laughs> so oh, that's a nice callback. We've we've talked about this a time or two, not exactly with dogs and cats, but definitely exotic animals, right? And it's Yeah, I think it was something with horses. Well, we've talked about horse meat, but we've yeah. also talked about we even had some uh, some people call in and or maybe email in and then tell us some things they've eaten. But, yeah, you know, I've had possum, I've had oh, beaver. Yeah. Uh, there, there's some crazy stuff that you can eat. The question is, do you want to eat it? I think it's a situation of necessity. Yes, I agree, hundred percent. Or and, well, and, and above necessity, upbringing. Because culture. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, culture. culture, yeah, for sure. Because in the South, squirrel, possum. Yep, raccoon. Yep. All that stuff that is like, yep. oh my God, you eating that? Yeah, and, and go back. Hell yeah, that's good shit. Go back just 100 years ago, or even maybe 50 years ago in some areas, they were eating all kinds of stuff. Anything they could catch, they'd eat. Turtle, like you said, possum, roadkill. Yep. I mean, yep. they're pick, picking stuff up off the road. Um, you know how hard it had been to get roadkill on a carriage track? <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> You'd, you'd be lucky to find a horse. <laughs> Maybe you were eating turtle. <laughs> Gosh. Man, have you ever smelt a turtle? Can you imagine eating a turtle? <laughs> yes. Golly. All right, so when it comes to dogs and cats, we have a we have a relationship with them. Yep. And culturally, we've decided the line stops before we get to dogs and cats. However, in a bad situation, that line moves. <laughs> and it, it, Quickly. It, yep. It's, it moves so much that, that people have moved it so far as to add, an add-in of uh, humans. Oh, yeah. So 
that line's fluid depending on circumstance. Agreed. In our society now, we have the choice and the luxury of not eating our friends, right? Mm -hmm. And not eating our best friends, which is the dog. Um, cats, they don't seem they don't seem meaty enough to uh, uh you know, nobody be delightful. cares about cats anyways. However, you and I both I like boofaloo wings. We both listen to Meat Eater and we've both heard that Mountain Lion Mountain Lion's pretty delicious. Well we've heard and I have not tried it yet. I want to. I haven't tried it yet, but one of these days. Uh, so I think it's all culture. Now I will say when you watch those videos in Asia with the dogs in cages waiting to be killed. Yeah, that's Woo! that's a different story. I don't like it, man. Different Ugh. story. It 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 bugs me. Well, Do not like it. And, and I agree with you a hundred percent. But when it comes to where this question boils down to is a cultural difference. Yeah, of course. I think it's I think it's kind of shitty, really. Uh, because you can have our culture. We're not going to do anything. Cats and dogs, hamsters. Yep. It's all off limits. Don't right. touch that page. It's going to get you, sir. Right. Um, but you go about uh, 400 miles south. Yeah. And they're eating lots of stuff. <laughs> uh, some Some stuff that I might even cringe at. Yep. But you go even further south. Horses. Yeah, for sure. It's a delicacy. Yeah, it is. Yep. All around the world, they have they have a different appreciation for animals because not only are they a, a, a resource for them to harvest, but it's also their resource for them to harvest other resources. So it's, it's a community property. Right. Well, something else to consider is we are not involved, as a society as a whole, so I'm speaking generally. Sure. We're not involved in the killing process anymore. We've, we've outsourced. Unfortunately. Well, there's something to that. We don't, we don't have, when we want hamburgers, we don't have to deal with the idea of killing Betsy that's grazing out in our back our back 40. Agreed. You know, it's taken care of in a plant with closed walls yep. and we don't have to see it. Somebody else takes care of that. And when we get it, it's in this nice pretty package and we don't are, we're disconnected to the killing process. Mhm. Mm we just know that the meat prices keep going higher and higher. Yes, they do. That's true. <laughs> when I when I first started this idea of of wanting to quote unquote homestead, I've never really got to that point, but I tried. Sure. I won't kill rabbits anymore. I, I used to, I used to want to eat rabbits because they're they, they breed quickly, they're cheap, they're a red, they're a great supply of meat, easy sustainable resource. They require little room to mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a wonderful sustainable resource. Worst comes to worst, at some point I could do it. I've sure. done it. I do not like it. it. It hurts me emotionally to kill a rabbit. They're cute. Uh, they're cuddly. You look at a rabbit. I like them. Mm. I've got I got three rabbits on the back porch of my house right now because they uh, they survived past the level where I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not killing any more rats. <laughs> so those three, they're fortunate enough. They never made the uh, the meat drawer. Now chickens, no problem killing chickens. Doesn't bother me one bit. I've I've literally killed thousands of chickens. Sure, doesn't bother me, and I'll continue to kill chickens because they're good. I get to raise them. I get to know what they eat. Doesn't bother me a bit. We're not involved in the killing process. So when it comes, whatever level you put it at, if you're a meat eater, and know I, the process. I think you need to know what it looks like, feels like, to take a life. I think that I think that comes back to I guess it was last week's question about the the two weeks notice for shit going down right right i think this is something that that needs to be known for people yeah but it's not it's it, it literally isn't people don't know how to butcher animals not even a little bit what what percentage of your friends that you run around with at work that you see out on the street on a daily basis have ever butchered an animal, an animal. much less killed one yeah i, I know grown women 
that are grandmothers that don't know how to process a chicken, that can't take a whole chicken and cut out the legs, the thighs, and the breast. Yeah. I'm not even talking about the killing process. They don't even know how to cut up a chicken. They got a blank chicken yep. canvas. Right. <laughs> a chicken <laughs> canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. See, that doesn't happen. They go to the store and they buy a package of oh, drums. Well, well, everything's done cut up it's for all, me. It's all, all I gotta done. do is just batter that bitch deep fried. That's right. I pay, I pay an extra 20 cents a pound, and some poor sap in the assembly lines, he's doing all that for me, and I don't have to learn how to do it. Sure. You go to my grandmother... And you tell her that there are people her age that don't know how to butcher and cut up a chicken, <laughs> she would be mortified. Oh, yeah. It's crazy to think about. Oh, I met your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> She'd probably suck me for even saying that. Both sides be like, um, y'all need some knowledge. Do what? Need some, need some learnings. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey, check this out. Go, yeah, nice. <laughs> Going back to dogs and cats. I hope that I'm never in a situation where I have to eat them. I really do. That being said, worse comes to worse, they're definitely on the on the uh, they're definitely on the menu. Yeah, if, if it came down to it. Well, and here's the deal: it's just they're, meat. They're on the menu and they're on the know how to prepare menu. Yeah, that's true. So, and I, I hate to think of the idea that I need to be prepping myself to learn how to cook dog and cat. I hate that, but. Maybe it's something, you know, if you're prepper-minded, maybe that's something you need to consider. Well, but here's the other thing to the question is, why is it more acceptable to do pigs and cows versus cats and dogs? It's cultural, and you can't find them in the supermarket. (laughs) Well, fair enough. Shit. Yeah, I'm serious. If If you started finding dog loin... At supermarket, and it was cut up and packaged in those nice, night, n- nice, neat nice little, night and- little packages, and you brought them home, and they tasted fantastic. It's going to start to wane a little bit. It's going to change. It's going to be yeah. different. Agree. Agree. And there's a reason you don't see rabbit in the grocery store because it's weird. People are like, uh, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> However. Do you see what that looks like? If you if you go to these little private meat markets in town, you can buy goat, you can buy rabbit, and I've heard you can even buy like guinea pig and some of those other smaller animals that people are are processing. Yeah, and quail. Uh, the Cornish hen is going away, but that used to be a huge deal. Still is a big deal in some areas. Some areas. Some areas you can't find Cornish hens because they don't know what the hell it is or what to do with it. Yeah. So which is sad. I I love Cornish hen. Yeah, it's I know it's so very good. good. Um, you do have buttery. To, you do have to know how to cook it. Well, if you overcook there it, is it's, it's trash. But uh, uh, there, anyway. there's a fine line between buttery yeah. and <laughs> tar paste. That's true. <laughs> All right, let's get out of Thank You Blinders. We'll go right into Pastor and the Heathen. Pastor and the Heathen is brought to you by Uncle Festus's dog meat. The best damn dog meat you can find this side of the Appalachian Trail. Uncle Festus's dog meat claims to be the greatest 100% or almost 100% dog meat that you can find wrapped up in your supermarket. If you act now, you can buy a whole 20 pounds of Uncle Festus's dog meat for $9.99. All you got to do is put your credit card into the CD-ROM of your computer and we'll send you a free sample with every purchase that you make. Uncle Festus's dog meat wants you to try dog for the first time. <laughs> oh, goddamn, what do you think about that? I, I was thinking it should have been Uggs. Uggs. But instead, we got we got Uncle Festus's dog meat. <laughs> Uncle Festus. <laughs> hey, Uncle, Uncle Festus. <laughs> Uncle Festus pays good sponsorship money. I mean, so y'all shit. make sure to go out there and buy some Uncle Festus dog meat. He ain't done this. <laughs> he ain't done this wrong yet. Yo, Uncle Festus ain't done this wrong. <laughs> so this week's pastor in the heathen, I think, comes from a few weeks ago from our very own Nurse. medical resident in chief. Yes, can we the- say medical resident? Is that giving her too much credit? Uh probably so, but I don't care. I don't really care. So we hate her regardless. Either way, she's my sister. Oh, okay. And I hate her. <laughs> And I'm not going to give her too much guff okay. in the world of the medical field, especially 
since I've been doing this for about 82 and a half years. Nice, bro. Nice callback. So, so uh, what she's referring to, if she talks shit, is my work. All right. So, Pastor and the Heathen, what are we talking about? I need you to focus. Hone okay. in. We're honing in. Okay. Okay. She brought up episode 39 was the suicide pods. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's right. The the quite controversial yep. suicide pods. So we're going to hear two perspectives, maybe, and maybe end up on the same perspective. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I think you said you had found something on the actual pod she was talking about. Yes. Okay. So uh, what she was looking into is what is called the... Sarco. So what she was looking into is called the Sarco. The sarcasm suicide? <laughs> no. Okay. What, I mean, if you look into it, it's pretty legit. Okay. I, I, I do agree with the name of it because it is the Sarco as in a sarcophagus. Ooh, interesting. I know, right? Okay. I, I, that's a nice this play on pre- words. Pretty legit. All right, fair. So so here's the deal with the Sarcos. Plus one point to the suicide pod. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. <laughs> so with the deal on the, on the Sarcos, it was developed by this cat named Philip. Uh, that good, huh? <laughs> Nietzsche. Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> My German pronunciation the, the is only, not good. The only thing better than that would be if his name was Philip Kevorkian. I'm well agreed, but it's Philip N I T S C H K E. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not even going to venture to say what it is. It's uh. probably not Nietzsche. But um, Phil's close enough. I'm witches. We don't want to fuck with. I tell you what. <laughs> let's go with Philip. Oh, Philip. Yep. So Philip has created this quote unquote death pod, which allows users to press a button to, like we talked about in thirty nine, right? The final death nail. Euthanize. Okay. Your own self. All right. All right. So it's a suicide button. It is a suicide button that will allow you to inject enough nitrogen to alleviate the oxygen levels to where you basically slip into a state of uh, slumber. Yeah. Like I would assume. In conscious. Yeah. Kind of a coma-like state. Yeah, you basically go straight into... Broop. (laughs) What? (laughs) Broop. (laughs) Okay. Not a great selling point. (laughs) I mean... I mean, if you were to say, hey, you want to go to... Broop? Nope. Well, I mean, what's the alternative? Okay, you need to go on. What what else happens? (laughs) Broop is not a selling point. They need to definitely leave that off the pamphlet. Well, I I don't think that's on the pamphlet. That's good. However, what they say is the Sarco, quote unquote, which is what it's called, is now going to be... Oh, goddamn. You shouldn't have drank that beer, bro. No, well, this is is hard to talk about. Uh Uh-huh. Diesel. Just give just give us a rundown. French. Hey. Don't burn down my god <laughs> shitty ass bar. <laughs> it's fine. You son of a You bitch. got insurance. You'll be alright. No, I don't. Not on this goddamn thing. It's attached to your house. No, it's not. Homeowners covers this this shit. It is. But for when you're in here, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to go or are we done? Oh. I thought we were. I, 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 you hit the sauce too hard, bro. Allegedly. No. 
<laughs> Allegedly. Do you want to skip it and go right to updates when we just finished the episode? Where are we at? You literally were in the middle of talking about the suicide pods and went into La La Land. <laughs> well, I don't remember where we went from La La Land to you, fucking suicide pods. You too. literally made a word up. Broop. Broop. Yeah. You said you're in a state of consciousness of broop. And I said we should probably leave it off the pamphlet because it's a terrible name for coma-like state. Maybe you should handle the <laughs> remainder of this episode. <laughs> Jesus. Because Baroop is legit as fuck. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay, tell you what. Um, Baroop, really? Yeah, well, we can go back and play it, but I'm pretty sure that's what you said. Okay, Pastor and the Heathen, Suicide Pods. We talked about Ashley bringing it up, and I asked what it was. And you were in the middle of trying to explain it, and you failed epically. Well, actually, you didn't fail epically. You just came up with a weird word. But that's the Broop. state. Yeah. So you slip into your state of unconsciousness, <laughs> and then what happens? Oh, well, fuck, that's gay. So updates? Gay. <sighs> Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> Fucking guy. Swear. I swear to fucking Christ. All right. Well, we did the, uh, <laughs> did Thank You Blinders. So I'm going to play the updates. Let's get out of it. You ready? Can you handle the updates? Well, God damn, I got to get my shits. No, no, I'm gotta doing get the, my shits. I'm doing the updates. All you got to do is we got some news updates for you. And then I need you to get the, uh, ponder this. Up and ready to go. Because we're doing the uh, bidges. Nice. Nice. Ready, son? Uh, No. God damn. I just put my hat on. I was not even ready for that shit. (laughs) I'm still trying to find it. Find what? All you have to do is we got some news updates for you. Yeah, but I still got to find the news updates. I'm doing the updates. We we literally talked about that at the beginning of the episode. I need you to find the TikTok video we're going to do for Ponder This. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Can you do the news updates so I can get this done? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Nice, bro. Just to piss you off. I got some news updates for you today. It was very Harry Carey-ish. I know. <laughs> that little bit, that little bit, you know, about what we're doing today, isn't it? Oh, good Lord, bro. That's uh, that's more spot on the money than you should be. But <laughs> updates today. We don't have any call-ins. We don't have any voicemails. We don't got any emails. We don't got anything like that. But we do have a reminder to go check out all of our affiliates. All that stuff's in the episode description. You can just go down there and you can click on it. And if you buy stuff from them using our promo codes, it helps them, it helps us, and it helps you save like 10, 15, 20% on stuff that we think that you ought to be doing anyway. I mean, you might as well be doing it. It's good stuff. I mean, legit. We use it. We do. Also, Go over to the socials. You can find us on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, and especially you need to go over to Facebook and check out the Cult of the Life Shippers private group. And you can join that group, and they'll ask you a couple of questions. You'll get entry, and then you're introduced to an array of wonderful chaps out there, wonderful meat suits that provide weekly 
daily even memes to suit all men and manners. I mean, uh, it's just amazing the kind of stuff that we put out up there. Meat suits. Meat suits. I like that. Supernatural. Supernatural okay. call. All Fair right. enough. Also, remind I'm going to remind you guys to join us over on Patreon. It's what helps keep us going. I know we're not big time. We don't have thousands and thousands of listens, but we do have Yet. a special loyal few that fuel the entire operation. Five bucks in a month, 20 bucks a month, whatever it is, helps us a great deal, more than you know, and we're going to do things in the future that require money. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. And so when you join... You tell us that you appreciate what we're doing and that we're going to continue doing that stuff in the future. We're on episode 41, and we're just getting started, bro. I mean, for real. We're, we're in the grind we mode We signed now. on for about 82,000 episodes. Dang, son, 82,000. Oh, by the way, I didn't mean to tell you about that one. Your grandma's going to be bathing you for a long <sighs> time. We're going to do 82,000 episodes. <laughs> I'm hoping to work her out of the grind. <laughs> Gross. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I will also say, if you're not able to join us on Patreon, that's cool. I will tell you one thing you could do for us that costs you absolutely nothing. It will cost you two minutes of your time. Go to Apple iTunes. Go to our website, fwtgpodcast.com. Leave us a review. It means a wonderful, great amount to us. And what happened to the music just then? I mean, I mean, I even, like it. It even agreed. It totally agreed. It dropped out. It said, uh, get your ass over there. Leave us a review. Give us a reviews. We appreciate it. Even if you think that we're idiots, uh, all reviews help, even the bad Which ones. Which is fair. But please leave us a good review. Okay. We love you. Also, last but not least, thank you to the OGs and the newbies. All of you have been around from the very beginning. We appreciate you. And all of you folks that are coming on board now, you're just getting caught up or you're just getting introduced to a couple of episodes, and you just got introduced to our sponsor, Uggs <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> and Dog Meat. <laughs> if you can handle Uggs and <laughs> Dog Meat. Dumb you're me. you're one of us. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna retire BZ for the rest of the episode. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't. And also, last but not least, that's number two. Got to thank you to our wives, the producer, and also the silent partner. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much for allowing us to do this. Forty-one episodes in. Damn it! Couldn't do it without 41 you. Forty-one episodes. Yep. Are you ready to get out of this and do a little ponders? Do it. All right, then. Ponder this. Now, I understand that this ponder is uh, not going to be read by us. No, this ponder is actually Did it going to be... require that kind of an inhale? It was... It was... It's very needed. It's very breathy. It, well... I'm a breathy kind of I'm, person. I'm going to edit <laughs> well, that out. that was your fault. <laughs> you started this shit that's on you. It's on you. All right. So this is a ponder this coming at us from. This is coming from a TikTok user known as at Ben J Handy. And he is coming at us to drop a little bit of ponder this knowledge. Let's hear it. A divot on it. No more than a cue ball, a billiard ball, a pool ball is according to the National Billiard Pool, the people who make these things, it is two and a half inches in diameter. And can I have a bump or a divot on it no more than 0.005 inches? Which means that a the largest deformation on that ball is 0.22% of the size as the whole. Now the Earth is 41,804,400 feet around diameter and Mount Everest is 29,032 feet which means that Mount Everest represents a 0.069% deviation and the Marianas Trench represents a 0.0865% deviation which means the earth is in fact almost three times as smooth as a cue ball. What the heck was that at the end? What the French? Okay, so his point is the Earth actually, in all of its crevices and high-rise mountains... Crevasses! ...is very, very smooth. Like, That's what she says. Like billiard smooth. <laughs> we are literally conically 
smoother than a cue ball. None of that is true because the earth is flat. Horseshit. I hate you. All right, that's it for us. I'm Pastor Pinewood. And I'm BZ the Heathen. And we're signing off for episode 41 of Fat Nights with these guys. We'll catch you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Pinewood just got molested by a moth. Dude, I thought that was a Roanoke spider coming to get me, bro. It <laughs> was a Roanoke. Came out of nowhere. He just came out of nowhere. It's just started uh, butt raping your face. Wow. All okay. right, that's it for us. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No. All right, suck it up. We got to finish. We're right here at the end. We got to finish. Good God. Where the fuck were we on the end of that? Well, I'm just going to start it over. All right, that's it for us. I'm Pastor Pinewood. And I'm BZ the Ethan. And we're signing off from episode 41 of Fat Nights with These Guys. We'll catch you next week, same time, same place. Be there or be a flat earther. Or just a non-cylindrical people. Well, what? what did we come up with oh, on no, that? You should have went with it, bro. I was, I was going somewhere good with that. Oh, sovereign citizen. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, citizen. Citizen. <laughs> oh, flat earther, non sovereign citizen. Oh, you can't Fuck Harry. Guys. You can't Harry carry this part, bro. It's, it's uh, got to be solid. Oh, by the way, I'm saving all of this for prosperity's sake. Did. All right, that's it for us. I'm Pastor Pinewood. And I'm Beasy the Heathen. And we're signing off from episode 41 of Fraternize with These Guys. We'll catch you next week, same time, same place. Be there or be a flat earther. Eh, or you could be a sovereign citizen. Okay, bye. Bye, right, then. All right, I think I have the next million dollar idea, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Pumpkin spiced dog meat. So Uncle Festus should sell a line of dog meat that is... Uncle Festus pumpkin spiced dog taint. Not dog taint, dog meat, bro. You can't oh, no. sell dog taint. You could if it's uh, spiced enough. Literally cannot be spiced enough to get past dog taint. Um, have you known some white bitches? All right.